Goldfam joins us right now. Uri is a tour guide in Israel, so uh, obviously his business would not be uh, you know, booming right now for obvious reasons. We know that. But it brings up kind of a larger point. I'm you know, not joking around about it, Uri, but it brings up a larger point is that, you know, people have lives. People go to work. People have families. They're trying to support their families. And what's Israel like? You're in Jerusalem. It, it, can't, it can't just be normal right now. What's your life like? Um, well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, we are uh, we live just outside Jerusalem in the hills, uh, and you're right. Uh, their life, you know, the, the, the country still has to manage the the war. The conflict is happening in the south and heating up in the north. And sometimes the the rocket fire covers the uh, um, the entire country. But uh, but in between, life has to go on. Um, you know, banks and and kids need a place to go. So. Um, uh, different municipalities on the local level are running different programs. Kids go to school to have uh, uh, after-school programs or Zoom classes, for example. Um, and uh, from my perspective, my own uh, business uh, is, uh, is uh, well, right now it's all, it's all frozen. I had a full calendar for the fall, uh, and now it's all gone. And uh, to be honest, uh, after years of COVID, um, uh, just as the tourism industry was, was beginning to recover, uh, this is quite a blow. Uh, but I have to tell you that uh, right now, for us, that's a minor issue. Of course. Uh, I mean, of course. I, I knew you were going to say that. I mean, anybody would uh, would say that. But the reality is that, you, you know, you still have bills to pay and you have a life uh, to live. And, and, you know, this doesn't look like it's ending anytime soon. It just, I, I just think it just brings up the larger point that so many different people are impacted. I mean, what, from your point of view, what's your plan? Like, how, how do you plan to deal with what you kind of know is coming? A continued war, probably a ground invasion of Gaza, as we were talking about earlier. I mean, what, what's your plan? So for many di different tour guides uh, have uh, different uh, strategies. And I think everybody learned uh, after COVID that we need to have a uh, plan B. Um, me personally, uh, I'm planning on uh, uh, I will try to create a uh, electric tour and go on a circuit, uh, visit the United States, uh, visit some of my uh, former clients, churches, synagogues, uh, federation groups, and uh, offer some of my um, expertise in, uh, in the land of Israel, in Bible studies, in mm -hmm. political analysis, uh, in history, uh, and try to take my, my show on the road, instead of on the road in the land of Israel, the road in the United States, yeah. and I hope that will be that will have some kind of a um, uh, some kind of a, a, a of an impact that will enable me to continue to pay my bills. Uh, I also have some uh, digital assets of videos that I uh, would like to uh, market. And uh, if anybody's interested in <laughs> seeing a tour of the land of Israel right. uh, from the comfort of their own home, you know, you're more than welcome to look at my videos. There you go. The uh, you know what's funny? I think there's one other subject that you could probably contribute. To. It's a little bit off the uh, the beaten track from what we've been talking about, but. I think two different guests brought it up yesterday. You're talking about, you know, you're a family person living in Israel, and this war's happening. The images are beyond gruesome. They're all over the place, I'm sure, on your local TV, social media, everywhere else. Uh, what have you done in speaking to young people, children, about what's, what's happening? I mean, how's that being handled over there? I know their school is obviously impacted, but just their day-to-day -day life. How are people speaking to children? That's a really good question. Um, the uh, the kids in Israel are exposed to reality from a very young age. Uh, you know, they, they they start reading newspapers already at the age of nine and ten. Uh, they watch TV, they hear the radio, and of course, social media, which has no filters whatsoever. Um, we try to keep the kids away from the uh, um, some of the apps that might be showing some of the images that we don't want them to see. Yep. But at the end of the day, there's really no escaping it. Uh, I think the key word to this is resilience. The Israeli society is very resilient. Uh, there are resilient centers for people who are uh, traumatized. Um, there are very few people in Israel who are not traumatized at this point. Of course. Uh, this is uh, also affecting the kids in the schools. Teachers have the, uh, or receive the tools from the Ministry of Education to deal with these things. Uh, my kids, personally, I've got a nine-year-old, a 12-year-old, and a 14-year-old. Okay. And they all have uh, Zoom meetings uh, with their teachers and professionals. Uh, in school, and they're encouraged to air out their uh, uh, their feelings, mm -hmm. to meet each other. Uh, there are a lot of activities that they do in safe areas, 
to allow them to continue yeah. being kids. Right. You try uh, to you try to keep it normal. You do the best you can, but it's uh, exactly. boy, it's beyond difficult. Uri, thank you. All the best. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.